Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today I'm diving into a hot topic in software development that's been debated for years. Dependency injection versus singleton pattern. I'll be talking about why I think developers have gone too far with injecting everything into constructors and how a carefully designed singleton for cross-cutting concerns can actually make your code simpler, more maintainable and easier to use. So here's the deal. In the C-sharp world today, we see a lot of developers injecting every single service into constructors. And for some things, that's absolutely the right approach, especially for things like data repositories, caches, and external services, or dependencies which can be different from request to request. But there's a place where it becomes overkill. In some teams, singletons are outright banned and avoided at all costs. Even for built-in framework services like Task Factory or Culture Info, this mindset can lead to unnecessarily complex code bases where simple cross-cutting concerns like logging or time tracking get injected absolutely everywhere. Let's take a look at an example where we have a simple weather forecast service which fetches the weather forecast for a city from a remote service, calculates the weather forecast for a city based on local data, combines the two, saves the combined forecast to a file and returns it. As you can see we're injecting a logger tracer, time provider, stopwatch generator, even a JSON serializer, and more. In total, 12 services are being injected. While dependency injection works, this can quickly become cumbersome. Every class constructor gets bloated and we end up injecting dependencies everywhere for simple cross-cutting concerns. In this example, we can see how the weather forecast service has a large number of dependencies. Well, this is just one service, but a lot of these dependencies will be used throughout the code base, such as the logger, tracer, time provider, stopwatch, JSON serializer, config, file systems, culture info, and many others. Every time one of these services needs to be used, it has to be injected repeatedly across different classes or passed around as parameters. Repeated injection leads to bloated constructors in many classes, making the code harder to maintain and increasing complexity unnecessarily. Now imagine we take a step back and ask, do these services really need to be injected everywhere? Let's look at a common cross-cutting concern such as logging, tracing, and time provider. These are services that are needed throughout the entire application and often don't change per instance or at runtime. Instead of injecting these services in, we can use a singleton that's globally available and configurable which will make it easier to access and still replaceable when needed for testing, making it a much better fit for end user applications where these concerns are ubiquitous and the usage is known. Let's start with time provider. I'm going to create a new class. I'm going to call it app services. So here I'm going to register and create all my app servers that I'm going to be using in my application. So the first ones we're starting off is time provider. So I'm going to create a static time provider, time provider, copilot doesn't know that it's time provider dot system. I guess it's not being trained enough on the new code. And I'm also going to make it mutable for testing. Now let's go back to our weather forecast service and we can remove the injected time provider as we will be using the app services singleton instance, which should simplify the class as I can now directly access the app services time provider. So I've turned all the other dependencies into a global singletons other than the calculator as I believe the calculator is business specific. It's only used in this one place. It's unlikely to be used throughout the whole code base and therefore not really a cross-cutting concern. Therefore I think it's worth calling it out in the constructor as it's sort of what parts of the main business logic. So some of the other things that I've modified is logger. I've changed it to a static logger using zlog. Activity source. So for tracing, I've created a activity source called tracing in here, which just gives me my global activity source for the whole application, which I can use to start activity anywhere now that has access to this app services. So here, static logging stopwatch. I'm just using the globals static stopwatch. In this class, it's not super important to test if, if my stopwatch methods are being called correctly. This is just some diagnostic information at the end of the world if it's slightly off or broken. So city name provider, again, this is a class that is highly likely to be or is used throughout the code base. If you can imagine a city ID is passed around through 20 or 30 different services or endpoints, and in a lot of code, you're going to need to get the city name. Something like that I would consider a cross-cutting concern and therefore I would put it into app services as it's uh, relatively slow moving data and it's not different from one request to another. It is sort of global state in your application that would be registered as a singleton anyway. So just having easier access to it means you can access it easily from anywhere, including extension methods uh, which have no 
in instance without needing to pass around the city name provider everywhere so task factory we're just using a standard task that run that hopefully you're familiar with as we don't we await this anyway so we don't really care as much of being able to control when this task starts as long as it just starts somewhere else and run http client another one it could have been left as inject but i feel that if your http client that you're using literally has no custom headers for that url or no specific logic for that url it's just a bog standard http client then it's just worth having a global singleton which is often better than you in one up each time due to various issues so i am fine with a http client being a global singleton i've also seen a global http client for internal reasons where you have another internal http client which is authenticated against your internal network so either passing around the token or uses uh, negotiate or the like for file systems, we're just accessing directly. If I was to write tests for this, I would just make sure my tests have the right uh, file systems in place so it's able to run in somewhere where it can write, write files to. And I'll just make sure my paths in my config are set to, to relative in my test. Another thing I did move is the config. Config often, at least in a lot of applications I've seen, it rarely changes after startup. It's more differences between environments and being able to tweak parameters in between restarts. If you do have dynamic config and you need to monitor for changes, you might be better off using iOptions monitor to make that explicit. But in, I would say 90% of cases, config is just something that is bound at startup to a bunch of JSON files, and then it's static throughout the rest of the runtime. Therefore, I think it just makes sense to be a singleton. For testing, again, this is super easy. Um, to just replace with a DTO that just has a, a couple of strings that you set during testing. So stopwatch is global and then also time provider here we've already mentioned and that's pretty much it. Another thing that's worth mentioning, you can put app services into import statics. This is questionable sometimes as you're hiding the fact that these are behind some singleton state people might be thinking that config or tracing is some member or somewhere in the inheritance tree because this might be inheriting from something so it's team preference i would say whether you do that or not but i think to me this is much cleaner code much easier to read as i'm seeing standard constructs rather than seeing abstractions everywhere and it's just a lot quicker to use and more flexible now this isn't to say that everything should be a singleton far from it but for certain cross-cutting concerns that touch most of the application this pattern shines it simplifies things like logging tracing task factory scheduler time provider static config and we often implicitly use it for things like current culture local time synchronization context execution context locking string interning shared array pool and many others these services injecting them into every single class makes no sense the singleton keeps your code dry but and if you need to swap out this implementation for testing or a specific case you can still do that easily however there's an important distinction i want to make if you're building a library or a shared component that others will consume injecting dependencies as interfaces is often still the best approach as you can't guarantee how your library is going to be used and how many different implementations of a dependency you may be given it provides flexibility for the consumers of your library allowing them to swap out implementations as needed but when it comes to deployable applications such as ASP.NET Core website, especially ones that you control end-to-end, -end, it's often easier and more efficient, in my opinion, to use a replaceable singleton for common cross-cutting concerns. Now, most of you might be thinking, I heard singletons are bad. What about testability? What about tight coupling? Great questions. And here's why I think the hate word singletons is often misplaced. You avoid interference between tests, especially when running them in parallel. There are two approaches I recommend. First, if possible, run your tests via separate executions and ideally across different machines and collate results at the end. Otherwise, what you can also do, which is what I do quite often to be honest, is to use async local. This helps isolate shared state per execution context, preventing parallel tests from stepping on each other's state, especially when dealing with singletons or global services. Let me show you a quick demonstration of what happens when using a static singleton without proper isolation. As you can see, the tests are marked with parallelizable attribute. This means that each test will run at the same time in parallel. This creates a situation 
where multiple tests run in parallel. And in these tests, we are overriding the global instant time provider to something different. And in each test, we're doing this separately, meaning that whatever test runs last, that app service the instance time provider will be that last one. The tests may pass individually, but almost certainly when the tests are run in parallel, they will fail. And this is because they are expecting that shared state to be whatever the local state there is. What each test is doing is just setting, creating a new fake time provider, setting the global instance to the new fake one in a loop of 30 iterations, advancing the time of my fake time provider that I created, and then checking that my single time from app services time provider is the same as my local time. And then I'm waiting 10 milliseconds and doing that in a loop of 30 times. And each test is exactly the same where they're doing exactly the same thing. So you can have three tests running in parallel, or doing 30 loops of incrementing each time by one second and then just verifying that the global service is the same as my local time but it's not because only one service will whoever the last write of this will win to resolve this issue we can implement an async local version of our app services which ensures each test has its own isolated instance of time provider here's what that will look like by using async local each test execution context gets its own time provider preventing interference between parallel tests this way we maintain the flexibility and simplicity of using state across tests, allowing the test to pass while still using global state. As you can see, we've swapped out the static singleton for async local app services. Now the tests are running in parallel, and because each test has its own instance of time provider, the global state remains consistent, and the tests pass without interference. Another concern often raised about singletons is tie coupling. Sure, but remember, cross-cutting concerns like logging, time management, and thread handling are already inherently coupled with your application. Making them injectable everywhere doesn't magically decouple them. It just adds an abstraction. Instead, using a replaceable singleton makes sense, especially for services where you typically have a single implementation in production. Plus, you can still replace the singleton with a different implementation whenever required, whether for testing or specific use cases. So here's the takeaway. Don't fall into the trap of injecting every service into every class just because it's a trend. For cross-cutting concerns, a well-implemented singleton can make your code base cleaner, easy to maintain, and just as flexible. It's important to note, though, that using a singleton like this is most effective for end-user applications, such as deployable web applications, where services are needed throughout the code base and typically have only a single implementation in production, ignoring testing scenarios. This is definitely not for library development. As teams, we need to stay pragmatic. The goal should always be to build software that's not only maintainable, but also easy to read and use. That's part of why we're seeing other languages and frameworks gain popularity. They let developers get up and running quickly without all the ceremony that comes with dependency injection for everything. By sticking with pragmatic solutions like replaceable singletons for cross-cutting concerns, we can keep our C-Shop applications lean and efficient without sacrificing flexibility. What do you think? Let's talk about it in the comments. Like and subscribe for more practical C-Shop and architecture discussions.